Now each of these forces are going to create a moment about the axis of rotation at point O. There is one very important point to make here, because trust me, it's a point of failure for many of the engineers we have worked with in the past. And come exam day, if you don't have this dialed in, it's, and if it's not automatic, then you're toast on these problems. And that is the sense of the moment. A moment does have a sense, but like I said before, it's not defined in the same way it, it is for a force. Rather than it being that angle between some reference line and a force, the sense of a moment is the direction of rotation about the, about the axis of rotation. Now we will usually represent the sense as either clockwise, which is a negative moment, or counterclockwise, which is a positive moment. But again, it doesn't matter. You can say that counterclockwise direction is positive, or sorry, negative, and that the clockwise direction is a positive moment. The only thing, again, I must reiterate, you've got to hold that constant throughout all of your calculations. Now in this problem, as you can see, we are defining counterclockwise as our positive moment direction. So what will be the effect of each force at the axis of rotation then? Isolating and looking at only our FX component of uh, 150 pounds, it's going to actually create a clockwise rotation about point O. So this is going to be considered a negative moment when we go to sum all the results. Now doing the same for our FY component of 260 pounds, this is actually going to create a counterclockwise rotation about point O. So this is going to be considered a positive moment, which makes our combined moment formula equal to FY times DY minus F sub X times D sub X. So that's our combined moment formula. Notice how we're subtracting the moment created by the F sub X component. Again, that's because it's making a clockwise moment at point O, which is against what we have defined as a positive moment. All right, so we're there. We're ready for some trigonometry. We need to develop some right triangles and we need to deploy our knowledge of SOHCAHTOA to get the values we need to complete our calculations. Again, what I wanna do is mute everything so that we can just focus strictly on the geometric makeup that we are interested in. So let's start with highlighting the distances that we need to define, which are right there. Now both of these line segments are perpendicular to their respective line of action as shown, creating a 90 degree angle at the intersection point. And now we can create these two right triangles as you see right here highlighted in green. So now that we have these triangles, do we have everything we need to move forward with solving this problem? We aren't good actually here. But there's a much better way to go about solving this problem with less effort. So let me just show you how. So this length right here, as you saw at the just at the top of that diagram, it's six feet. Now that does most all the work for us in defining d sub x. We see right here, we're just dropping a line down. That's that solves most of d sub x. And the remaining portion right here that we don't have to find actually projects up to the base of our right triangle as you see right there with the arrow. Which means in reality all we need to do is solve for the components of this one triangle. Defining the geometry of it and we're done. Going the other route we really didn't have a defined interior angle if you see all we had was a angle from the line of action, or sorry, from F1 over to the line of action of our Y component of force. So we would have had to do some work, but this triangle has everything that we need into it. 
So again, let's go ahead and break out this triangle out of the figure, identify the geometry we already have, define and solve for the lengths that we need. So looking at our original illustration, we can see that the hypotenuse of this triangle is going to be six feet, as I just defined, as I just highlighted in blue, and I bring that down. So our hypotenuse is six feet. We also now know from our original illustration that the angle between the vertical component of this triangle and the hypotenuse is 30 degrees. And inserting that into our right triangle, we have that. And of course our vertical component will be our dy length. Our horizontal component will be the second portion of our dx length, which I denote here as dx2. With our triangle now fully defined, with the geometric data we need, we can use our trig identities to quantify dy and dx2. Now we won't pull up the reference of our trig identities at this point, but what I will do now is throw up the generalized nomenclature for each side of our triangle. So that being, a, we have our hypotenuse H, we have our opposite uh, dx2, and our adjacent side is dy. And of course, this is where Sokotoa comes into play. So skipping all the intermediary steps, we will use so, and we will use ka, which plugging in our data comes out to be our dx2 component is three feet, our dy component is 5.2. So now all we need to do is actually plug in our data along with our force components to get our moments, right? We just have to figure out what each uh, individual moment is, right? Well, once again, we are not finished. Now, everybody heard of, uh, um, you know, the story of the sheep who cried wolf, right? So I've already, uh, I've already uh, messed with you twice. I'm sure you're not going to fall for it again. But our DX2 component of three actually needs to be added to our DX a component of six to get our complete uh, length dx so i probably should have named those dx1 and dx2 but nonetheless we are not ready all we need to do is add a six plus three is nine feet our dy component is still 5.2 all right so cleaning this up again a little bit muting all of all the other information is that is just confusing to us uh, we don't need the graphics. We have what you see right there. So dx is equal to 9, dy is equal to 5.2. We got our forces. So now we just need to plug in our values. And yes, I'm not messing with you now. So we do just that. We got 260 pounds times 9 feet minus 150 pounds times 5.2 feet. And we conclude that the moment about 0.0, our summed moment, is 1,559 pound foot. So the correct answer here is C, 1,559 pound foot.